Thank you very much, uh, my dear sister. Another round of applause for President Zude. Let me now take this opportunity to request Brahim Ghali, the President of Zaharawi Arab Republic. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Your Excellency, President of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto, and also his uh, uh, head of the Committee of Heads of States on Climate Change, and also head of the AU, and also Mr. Musa Fiki, head of the AC, Your Excellencies, heads of states, heads of governments, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure at the outset to extend my wholehearted thanks to the Republic of Kenya, the government of Kenya, and the people of Kenya, and uh, President uh, William Ruto for this gracious invitation to attend this meeting. I would like to thank you for the excellent hospitality, and would like to thank you for all sorts of uh, efforts and generosity for the sake of the success of this great event, which is the Climate Summit in Africa. And our uh, Saharan Republic also is facing the climate change like so many other countries in the world. We're facing all these challenges related to climate change. Meanwhile, we have another struggle to put an end to occupation in my countries due to the occupation because of the conflict with Morocco. And those are challenges are intertwined. This situation led to the displacement of more than 200,000 and temperature in the refugee camps are uh, immeasurable. In our occupied territories, the different uh, uh, practices of occupation, which is outside the uh, control of the international law without any kind of uh, control. It lets, leads to the aggravation against climate change, like, for instance, uh, the um, problems with fishery, and uh, this depletes our water and agricultural resources for the sake of uh, exports. And uh, this kind of military occupation is sort of a wall and divides our country into two parts. And this deprives the occupied territories from water. And this is a very dangerous environmental uh, deterioration. And this increases drought in our region. It also led to so many deeply rooted changes in the surface of the land, which became more expo exposed to wind erosion and also water stagnation. There are also mined areas along this wall became uh, uh, inhabitable and also it has a very limited economic production. Those challenges, huge challenges, required practical measures on our side to deal with the situation. And in this context, we developed our NDC and we identified through it the urgent measures for, adapt for adaptation of climate change and mitigation of its uh, uh, limits. And we did that through strengthening um, development, which is based on renewables instead of fossil energy. And we supported NDC by having 
anything, an NAP or NAP, through the common ministerial initiatives that included several ministries. In the, in the uh, Sahrawi uh, refugees camps, we developed agricultural systems to reduce the use of water. We also developed modern means with the low costs for housing. And the purpose of that is to face the increasing risks of floods in addition to the spread out of using solar energy in small uh, uh, units. We also have uh, also experienced some electricity uh, projects using uh, solar energy, wind energy, and we're using it also in medical facilities in remote and uh, 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 isolated areas. There we use solar energy. Mr. President, although we have a desert nature, but we do have so many resources to provide to the blue economy in Africa. We have long coasts, and it's very good for fisheries. And our coast, which goes as far as 1,110 kilometers, the land there is known for its resources and, uh, of course, uh, it's uh, adopted by Ramsar uh, Convention. Those areas are Wadi Saqya, Bujdur, Dakhla Bay, and Sabkha Imlili. And although all those uh, resources are exposed to climate change, because of the excessive depletion of those resources under occupation, but uh, our country emphasizes that it's committed to execute and implement uh, cautious plans in this area. And this is in harmony with the African initiatives and its goals uh, to protect uh, the African coasts uh, in Africa. In addition to our work or setting out administrative plans for the uh, important environmental areas and according to the climate uh, change requirements, we're going to work, to work with other countries and have partnerships and with those countries and African organizations to build our national capacities and to exchange experience in relation to the blue economy. The delay of uh, the termination of the occupation by the United Nations, which is the last in Africa, that doesn't mean that we are fully, fl uh, fully f uh, participation uh, in the international global efforts to face the climate change and its detrimental impacts. It is illogical that we're deprived of getting the required and allocated financing to face climate change. And we're also deprived of the technical assistance through the uh, climate change mechanism under the United Nations uh, and other organizations. <clears throat> we cannot be deprived from our rights and duty to take part with Africa and the world in this kind of uh, uh, efforts against climate change and also we have been uh, coexisting for years and years with those uh, dire and uh, difficult climate circumstances like other countries. We should be represented in the new FCCC and also in the COP. 
And also we should sign also the Paris uh, Agreement and take part in the negotiations and to also adopt our NDC regularly to the UNFCCC. Our voice is and will be an African uh, voice, and it's going to support the African voice and stance. Sustainable development and the management of blue economy in Africa is strongly related to uh, the way we use to respond to climate change. And we are ready to contribute with our brothers and sisters in Africa and the whole world to achieve the best results and outcomes. I wish you all the best in this summit, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency Gali, for that statement.